how to play Lost Ruins of Arnok. One to four players, ages 12 and up, playtime 30 minutes per player. Lost Ruins of Arnok is played over five rounds, where players draw five cards from their deck and then take turns digging at sites, discovering new ones, overcoming guardians, playing cards, researching, and buying item and artifact cards until they either run out of options or choose to pass early. Once all players have passed, the round progresses, and after five rounds, whoever has achieved the most, indicated by purple points, wins! Components The main board with the bird temple and advanced snake temple on the other side. Supply board, coins, compasses, jewels, tablets, and arrowheads. Guardian tiles, level 1 and 2 dig site tiles, assistance, player boards, temple tiles, idol tiles, notebook and magnifying glass tokens, archaeologist meeples, research bonus tiles, moon staff and starting player marker, blocking and reserve tiles, rival action tiles for solo mode, basic starter cards, fear cards, item cards, artifact cards, and a score sheet. Setup! For your first game, use the bird temple side of the main board. The more advanced snake temple will be explained later in this video. Place the moon staff at the first position. Shuffle the artifact and item decks, then deal one artifact to the left of the moon staff and five items to the right. Place the fear cards. Randomly place one idle tile face up on each of the level one dig sites and two idle tiles, one face up and the other face down on the level two dig sites. Depending on the number of players, you might need to block some of the basic site action spaces. For two players, block all the double boot spaces. For three players, block three random double boot spaces by choosing blocking tiles at random. Four player games will utilize all of the spaces. Stack the temple tiles like this. Randomly stack as many research bonus tiles as there are players face down at the top of the track. Then randomly place bonus tiles face up in their spots on the research track. Note that some spaces are only for 3 to 4 player games. Place the resources in their spots. Shuffle the level 1 and 2 dig sites and place them here. Shuffle and place the guardian tiles. Shuffle and randomly place 3 stacks of assistant tiles silver side face up. Finally place each player's notebook and magnifying glass at the start of the research track. Give each person a player board and their starting cards, which are 2 funding, 2 exploration, and 2 fear cards. Shuffle them and place them face down, and place your archaeologist meeples on your board. The starting player is the one who most recently visited a place they have never been before. Give them the starting player token, then distribute the starting resources based on turn order. Gameplay! The turn! On your turn you must perform one of the following main actions. Dig at a site, discover a new site, overcome a guardian, buy a card, play a card, research, or pass. In addition, you may perform one or more free actions. Your hand. Each card in your hand has a travel value for digging at sites and an effect. If the effect has a lightning bolt next to it, then it is a free action but does not count as a main action. You may play free actions before, after, or even during your main action. Fear cards have no effect, but they do have a travel value and also count as negative points at the end of the game. So be sure to be brave and exile your fear cards whenever possible. Main Actions Dig at a Site Digging at a site is one of the main ways to gain resources. You may dig at a site to resolve its effect if it has an empty space and you have an available archaeologist. First pay the travel cost by placing cards from your hand in front of you in your play area to meet the travel cost of the site. You can use an airplane to pay for any other icon, buggies and ships can pay for a boot, and you can pay two coins to charter a plane. Then place one of your archaeologists at the site and resolve its effect, like you now. Discover a new site. To discover a new site, first pay either three compasses for a level one site or six for a level two site and place an available archaeologist on that spot. Then resolve the face up idol and place it face down on your player board. Some sites have two idols, but you only resolve the face up one. Take the top tile from the corresponding stack and place it face up at that location and immediately resolve its effect. Finally, awaken a guardian by placing the top tile face up on top of that location. The guardian does not do anything yet, but if that guardian and your archaeologist are still there at the end of the round, you will gain a fear card. Oh no! Overcome a guardian. If you currently have an archaeologist at a site with a guardian, you may pay its cost to overcome it and place it near your player board. Each guardian has a boon at the top right which can be used once on any of your turns to resolve its effect. After you activate the boon, flip it on over. They are each worth 5 points at the end of the game even if you don't use its boon. 
Guardians remain at a dig site until they are overcome, but do not prevent you from digging at the site. So you could still dig at the site, even if you weren't able to overcome it this turn. Buy a card. Buying new item and artifact cards is crucial in building a stronger deck throughout the game. To buy an item card, pay its cost at the bottom left, then place it face down at the bottom of your deck. To buy an artifact, pay the compass cost at the bottom, then move it to your play area and resolve its effect without paying the activation cost. That little tablet thing right there. Then immediately refill the card row by sliding the cards toward the moon staff and placing a new card from the deck in the empty space. Play a card. To play a card, simply place it face up in your play area and resolve its effect. If there's a lightning bolt, then it's a free action. Otherwise, it counts as your main action. When you play an artifact from your hand, you must first pay its tablet cost before resolving its effect. Research. Research allows you to gain points, resources, and assistance while traversing your magnifying glass and notebook up the research track. Choose either your magnifying glass or notebook, pay the cost between it and the space you want to move to, then move on to that space. However, the notebook can never move ahead of your magnifying glass. Get back here! If there's a bonus tile, resolve its effect and remove it from the game. These are on a first come first serve basis. Then gain the rose effect based on which token you move. If it has a silver assistant icon, choose a face up assistant and place it on one of the available assistant spots on your player board, silver side up. If it's a gold assistant icon, flip over one of your assistants to gain access to its gold side. Oh, that's nice. The purple points are not additive, but represent the point value of your magnifying glass and notebook at the end of the game. You may resolve the row effect before the bonus tile if you wish. Once your magnifying glass reaches the lost temple, place it in the leftmost empty space and take a bonus tile, resolve it, and remove it from the game. From now on when you choose the research action, you may activate your magnifying glass to pay the cost of any temple tile and add it to your board to gain points at the end of the game. Passing. If you are not able to do a main action or do not wish to do any more, you will pass to let the other players know that you will not be taking any more turns this round. Once you pass, you cannot take any other actions, so get all those free actions done before you pass. Free actions. Effects with this lightning bolt icon are free actions. On your turn, you may resolve as many free actions as you want before, after, or even during your main action. Free actions can be on cards or even on your assistants. Set up for the next round. If it is not round 5, all players return their archaeologists to their board. If there's a guardian, then add a fear card to your play area. If in the rare case you still have cards in your hand, choose to either place them in the play area or keep them for the next round. Shuffle all cards in your play area, then place them at the bottom of your deck. Refresh your assistance. Exile the artifact and item next to the moon staff. Move the moon staff to the right, then refill the card row. Move the start player to the left, and then you're ready for the next round. End of round V. Players take their archaeologists back and gain fear cards if they have come from a site with a guardian. Skip the rest of the round setup and move on to final scoring. Final scoring. Use the score sheet to add up all the players' points, including the value of each research token, temple tiles, idols and empty idol slots, guardians that you overcame, items and artifacts, and negative points for fear cards. Whoever has the most points wins. Yay! If there's a tie, the first person who reached the temple wins. Yay! If no one made it to the temple, then the furthest player along the research track wins. Yay! If there's still a tie, you fail. Burn the game and never play it again. You don't deserve it. Idols. Idols are gained by discovering new sites and are placed face down on your player board and they are worth three points each at the end of the game. During your turn as a free action, you may permanently place an idol in the leftmost open slot to resolve one of the effects on your player board. For example, you need an arrowhead, but all of the sites that give you them are occupied, so you can place an idol to immediately gain an arrowhead. Note that the uncovered idol slots are automatically worth points at the end of the game, but if you cover them with an idol, you lose those points. However, the idols are always worth 3 points whether they are placed in a slot or not. Exile. Some rules and effects send cards into exile. This means you place it in their corresponding discard pile next to their deck. Fear cards just go on the top of the fear deck, and for easier cleanup at the end of the game, you may place starting cards to the side. Assistance. You can recruit assistants as you move your notebook up the research track. When recruiting an assistant, choose a face-up tile from one of the three stacks and place it on an available spot on your player board. On your turn, you may exhaust an assistant to use its effect. Once exhausted, it can't be used again until the next round unless another effect refreshes it for you. 
If you upgrade an assistant, flip it over to its gold side and it's automatically refreshed even if the silver side was already exhausted. Snake Temple. Ugh. The Snake Temple is for more advanced players with different travel costs on dig sites in a different research track. One noticeable difference is the assistant rescue spot, one for each player, where you must discard an idol from your supplies to move your magnifying glass up and search through the stack of assistants. Choose one and place it on your board exhausted. You cannot discard idols that are in an idol slot for this. There are also magnifying glass effects that adds a fear card to your play area and a row of bonus tiles that are collected on a first come first serve basis. Solo Mode Solo Mode allows you to play against an automated opponent using a rival action stack. There's a great web app to help you with both regular solo mode games and a solo campaign, which I have done a playthrough for chapter one and have it linked in my description. Yay, go watch it! Set up for a two player game and give yourself a gold and a compass since you will be starting second. Oh. The rival gets a player board with the gray side up and all six remaining archeologists. What? The rival only uses the magnifying glass so you can keep the notebook in the box. In solo mode, your rival will always be the starting player. Each turn, you will reveal a rival action tile, which you will resolve, then move on to your turn. The rival does not pass until all action tiles have been played. The app will set up the rival action stack for you based on difficulty level, green for beginner, and red for advanced, or specific campaign scenarios, so I'll just go over the rival action. Dig at a site. The rival's role is to block resources from you and it will choose the topmost site with the matching resource. If there are two in the same row, then use the decision arrow to decide whether to choose the leftmost or rightmost site. Discover a site. This tile means the rival will discover a new level 1 or level 2 site based on which round it is. This means the rival does nothing on the fifth round. All right. If it's a level 1 site, choose the lowest site and use the decision arrow to determine if it will be the leftmost or rightmost site. Then move the idol or idols to the rival board. If the face-up idol matches one that the rival has not collected yet, then place it in its slot. Otherwise, place it face down on the negative 1 slot. Place the new site tile, and a guardian will only be placed if this symbol is next to the current round. Research. Advance the rival's magnifying glass to the next row, using the decision arrow if there are multiple options. If there's a bonus tile or the lost temple space, remove the bonus tile from the game. If the rival is already at the lost temple, discard a 6 point tile based on the decision arrow if both stacks still have tiles. For both silver and gold assistant effects, remove the topmost assistant in the highest stack from the game, using the decision arrow for tiebreakers. On the snake temple assistant rescue spot, remove the top assistant in addition to one from the supply board. Oh. Overcome a guardian. Overcome a guardian at a site occupied by a rival archaeologist. Choose the topmost site and use the decision arrow to choose in the same row. If there are no rival archaeologists at a guardian site, then research instead. In this case, the rival does not take an assistant from the supply board, but will take one from the rescue spot on the snake temple. Buy an item or artifact. Based on the down or up arrow, take either the lowest or highest point value card and place it on the rival's board. If there's a tie, use the decision arrow. Then refill the card row. End of round. Place all rival archaeologists on its player board, but the rival does not gain fear cards. Do all your normal end of round actions, then move on to the next round in the app. Scoring. The rival expedition scores points for the position of their magnifying glass, temple tiles, guardians overcome, and cards purchased. They score 3 points for each unique face-up idol. The idols in the negative 1 stack only give them 2 points each. You score points as usual, then compare your points with the rival. Whoever has more points wins. If you chose the campaign mode, then follow the instructions in the web app. The end! Thank you for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe below. Also, let us know what you thought in the comments, and if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, put them there too. If you like looking at pictures, follow Board Game Tutorials on TikTok and Instagram. And finally, check out the website BoardGameTutorials.com and sign up for our newsletter.